All right, well, let's try to describe in words. Um, what do you think would happen here? What would happen first here? <clears throat> What type of mechanism would you expect might happen here? Uh, S and one. We have a secondary alpha carbon, and neutral oxygen is a poor nucleophile, so it really has to be SN1. Okay, so what would happen first? Um, the leading group is going to leave. Right, and what's the substrate going to look like immediately after the leading group leaves? It be, uh, be a carbon cation. Right. Okay, now. Based on what we talked about last time, you would now expect that the water would attack this carbon. However, um, it turns out that's not the only thing that can happen here. That's one of the things that can happen, but there's something else that can happen here too, which is that we can have a hydride shift. This is something we, uh, the two of us, have never talked about before, but this is something that is uh, uh, molecules are capable of doing. That would be represented by this arrow over here, this hydride shift. So let's see if we can draw what this would look like after the hydride shift. Uh, remember that if we really understand electron pushing arrows, once we see the arrows, it should be easy to draw the product. But let's see if we can actually draw the product here. So let's see what this would look like, the next intermediate would look like after the hydride shift. tells us that we're breaking the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen. And it tells us that the hydrogen is forming a bond to this carbon, like this. Now, actually, some people might not even draw in the hydrogen here because it's a hidden hydrogen. But maybe it's a good habit to draw it in since it's the whole focus of the reaction. The important thing, though, is to focus on the charges. We always have to change two charges, the initial tail and the final head. I think it's pretty clear that this uh, carbon is gaining electrons, so it becomes neutral. But who lost the electrons? Well, this carbon over here lost the electrons. What's happened is we've taken the two electrons in this bond and used them to form this bond. So this carbon has lost those electrons, so now it has the positive charge. Okay, now this is a little bit of a surprising reaction, um, but there must be some driving force. There must be some reason why nature would like to produce this. Well, why is this picture more pleasing to nature than this picture? Yeah, the carbocation is more stable. So in fact, we would expect this to happen quite a bit. Um, so um, the hydride is pretty favored here. So what types of, this is what's called a carbocation rearrangement. Well, what types of carbocation, that's a pretty logical name, we're rearranging the carbocation. Um, what types of carbocation arrangements can, rearrangements would tend to happen? Well, generally speaking, you, um, you can do a carbocation rearrangement that gives you a more stable or equally stable carbocation. Um, generally, you could have a carbocation rearrangement that gives you a more or equally stable carbocation. So, for example, if you start with a secondary carbocation, you could rearrange to form another secondary, or even better, you could rearrange to form a tertiary. But if you started with a tertiary carbocation, you really wouldn't predict rearranging to a secondary. That wouldn't be favored over there. Okay, um, and how do you know what's going to happen? Well, the pesky thing is that in solution, everything happens. So in solution, some of these molecules will rearrange to look like this, and then the water will attack this carbon. But some of the other molecules won't have time to rearrange, and the water will attack this carbon. So we're going to get a mixture of products. Um, anytime you have a carbocation, when you have carbocation intermediates, they tend to give you mixtures of products, because you do tend to get rearrangements, basically. Um, as far as making test questions is concerned, because there can be so many possible products, um, usually, they don't want you to really use carbocation rearrangements unless there's a strong clue for that in the problem. Usually, you should not really be thinking about carbocation rearrangements unless there's a strong clue in the problem that that's going to be an important element. Uh, because otherwise, you could spend forever drawing all the possible rearrangements. So usually, the problem will give you a clue. This problem, for example, specifically told you that it's about carbocation rearrangements. Um, okay, so we did this shift over here. So that means we're going to get two different types of products. We'll get one set of products where the water ends up, where the OH ends up on this carbon. And we're going to get another set of products where the OH ends up on this carbon. Um, what would be the major products? Uh, I don't know. Maybe this one, because this is the more stable carbocation. Uh, maybe. 
Uh, but you would get a mixture of both in this case. The important thing, though, for this problem is just to be able to predict the reasonable carbocation rearrangements. This is a high drive shift uh, over here. Does that make well, sense? Wouldn't the tertiary carbon, would that be a better product? Excuse, Excuse me? Wouldn't the tertiary carbon cation be the major product here? Uh, yeah, right. that's, that's, what I was, that's what I was guessing before. I was guessing that the major product would be the waters ending up over here. However, I think you would still get a substantial amount of waters on this carbon as well, because sometimes the water just gets in before the carbocation has a chance to rearrange, especially if the water is the solvent, because it will be tons of water molecules. There might not be time for the rearrangement to happen. But then we would definitely see a substantial difference between the tertiary carbon and the primary carbon. Ah, now remember, we can't make primary carbocations. Primary carbocations are so unstable, they wouldn't be formed in the first place. Okay. That's why earlier I said you might see a rearrangement from secondary carbocation to secondary carbocation, or you might see a rearrangement from secondary carbocation to tertiary. I didn't, I didn't even mention primary to secondary, because that wouldn't even get off the ground. You can't make primary carbocations. Um, next term, you might learn about some cases where you can make primary carbocations. But this term, you're never going to make any primary carbocations. Um, so you can't really do a rearrangement. There, there is a kind of rearrangement with primaries. Um, I don't know if your course is covering that, but there is a, you, don't, you don't really have a standard rearrangement with primary carbocations because you can't form a primary carbocation in the first place. Um, it's not stable enough. You can only form secondary and, or tertiaries even in the first place. Okay. Um, so we can look at one or two of the examples you assigned here, if you like. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Now that we've got the basic idea. Oh, I think the first one was the one I just did, so I'll do the second one. So here's a carbocation, and we want to discuss, uh, they're just asking to show a rearrangement, suggesting a uh, rearrangement here. Um, well, there's one thing to consider is, this. Now generally, you can only bring in a hydrogen from an adjacent carbon. So there's no way we can bring in, say, this hydrogen. That's too far away. That's generally not going to happen. That would be a 1-3 shift. That's usually too far. You can only do what's called a 1-2 shift. That just means on adjacent carbons. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, these are adjacent. Um, is this actually legal or illegal? Illegal. Why illegal? Yeah, if we did this, it would produce a primary carbocation. But we are not allowed to produce primary carbocations. This term, anytime you have a picture that looks like this, you must have made a mistake. Not even for a millisecond are we allowed to have a primary carbocation. Nature just does not allow that to happen. It's not stabilized enough. We can only make secondary and tertiary carbocations. So, um, so you need two things for a rearrangement. First of all, they have to, the hydrogen has to be on an adjacent carbon, but it also has to be producing at least a secondary carbocation. All right, so this doesn't satisfy that. So this is not allowed. And that stays put in the particular one. It's not, it's not going to try to steal the hydrogen. It's just gonna this hydrogen hydrogen. will stay put. That's right. Okay. So let's consider whether we can take a hydrogen from this carbon. No, because it's quaternary. There are none. Yeah. However, we haven't discussed there can also be carbon shifts, also called alkyl shifts. So this is what's going to happen here. We didn't discuss that yet, but this is also important. Um, you can have an alkyl group shift. I think usually it's only methyls, although maybe you could see some situations with something longer. But it's easiest to just shift a methyl from one place to another. So this is not called a hydride shift. It would be called an alkyl shift or a methyl shift. Well, again, now that I've shown the arrow, we should be able to draw what the product is going to be. So let's draw the intermediate from that step. Yeah. Although, for your notes, you should draw what the arrow was that oh, started you off there. We saw last time how numbering can really help you to get the right um, outcome here. 
So basically what we're doing here is we're moving the number three in the, in the starting material, the three was connected to the four. But now the three is going to be connected to the five. This is not a stereo center, so we don't need to worry about geometry. So I'll just put everything in the plane of the page. The number two is still connected to the four. And the most important thing is the charges. Well, the number five is gaining the electrons, so it's no longer positive. It's the number four that lost the electrons. Here's the electron that moved. So we've got to put in that positive charge. Remember, the only reason we're drawing these pictures in the first place is to figure out where the charges are. That's the reason we're drawing the pictures. That's the reason we're interested in carbocation rearrangements, because it rearranges where the positive charge is. That's the whole point of the picture. OK, so this is a different type of rearrangement. You can also have this. Now, does this seem reasonable? Well, was this primary, secondary, or tertiary? And what type of carbocation is this? So that would definitely be a favored rearrangement. So this is certainly the kind of thing that we would expect might happen here. 